Hi, are your users seeing too much content in your apps all at once? Well, in today's Friday functions, I'll be showing you how you can use an accordion to show and hide controls until your users actually want to see it. This is Mr. Dang. Let's check out a finished product where you can see this accordion in play. If I click into Badge, it'll open up like an accordion, and you could see all of the items underneath. I could click it again to hide it. If I click into Book, I'll show all the items for books, and if I click it again, I'll hide it. Let's go ahead and create our own. Here, I have a table from SharePoint that has a list of all these pictures and which category they belong to. I collected that table to a collection called Badges. The big idea I want you to understand is we're going to group each of those pictures and only show a certain group at a time, whatever I want selected. Because each group doesn't have the same number of records in it, I need a flexible height gallery. A flexible height gallery can grow or shrink depending on the number of records inside a group. It's going to be the gallery on the outside. I'll set its items property to badges. Then around badges, I'll use the function group by. I'll group it by the column that's called category. And I'll give uh, the resulting group of records that fits a category called images in group just so that you understand what's going on. It's the images inside that group. Inside this gallery, which I'll be naming gallery category, I am going to be adding a control for a checkbox. Let's rename this checkbox. This is going to be called checkbox visible. Now, this method that I'm going to be showing you is going to be showing and hiding elements inside of this gallery based on the, uh, the activity of this checkbox. So when this checkbox is clicked, it'll show things that are here. When it's unclicked, it will hide them. So we won't be needing any variables or collections for this method, which makes it very efficient. Let's give this tech checkbox uh, some information. I'll set it to this item dot and the name of this in uh, the name of this category. I just don't want people to know it's a checkbox. So I'm going to be changing the checkbox size from 70 to zero. Now it's just an ordinary uh, label. Below that label, I'm going to be including a, a gallery. I want a, an ordinary vertical gallery because it's not going to be needing to change its height. Uh, all of the content uh, doesn't have any long paragraphs of text or anything that would need to grow. So this is a good selection for me. For the Y coordinate, I'm going to have it sit right below that checkbox. So uh, I'm going to be using a relative reference to it, checkbox visible.y plus checkbox visible.height. You'll see it sits right below there. The items property of this gallery, which I'm going to be naming the gallery of badges, gallery badges. I'll be setting its items property to those images in the group. I'll set the image box so that it's set to uh, a label that I have key called key and the actual image. For you, this may differ. In the two text boxes, I'll be setting it to information uh, for the record. So just two columns, the title, Okay, 
what I want to do next is I don't want to show this table unless I have checked this uh, checkbox. So in the visible property of this gallery, I'll be setting it to checkbox visible dot value. It becomes invisible for all of them. Let's un let's click the first one just so that we have a gallery to work with. Now, right now I can scroll through it. I don't want to scroll through it. I don't want my users to scroll through it. I want it to adjust its height based on what's inside. I'm going to be searching for the height property of this gallery so that it could adapt based on the size of each record. If you look at the template size record, uh, property, you'll see that it starts at 160 pixels. So each of those records is 160 tall. I'm going to multiply it by the number of uh, items inside gallery badges that I have counted. I also want to add the amount of space that's sandwiched between each of those records. That property is called the template padding. Because it's sandwiching around all of those records, it's one more than the number of records inside. When I click play, I can see what this actually looks like. If I have accessories clicked, I can see all of the accessories. If I unclick, it'll hide it. If I click helmet, I'll see all the helmets. And you'll see I uh, I do need to scroll all at the top, but it's not scrolling within a, a container. And then I could go back out to make it more obvious that a field is selected. I'll be adding some icons. So in inside the gallery of badges, I'll click icons. I like to use what I call the shark tooth icon at the down arrow. This is to show that I want to reveal what's inside. I'll move it to the corner and I only want it visible when the checkbox is not checked. So I go to the visible property and I change it to checkbox visible dot value. And I want the opposite of that. So I put an exclamation point in front. Okay. Next, I add the opposite looking arrow, the up arrow. I'll move it to the corner. And I want to see this uh, checkbox, or I want to see this uh, icon when checkbox visible is true. In other words, when it's activated. So I click accessories, and then you see that the icon adapts. I unclick, and it adapts as well. One final step, I'm going to move these icons so that they're below the checkbox. So I'm going to click home, I'll click reorder, I'll send it backward. Now it's behind the checkbox. That way, I can use the selection space and it'll deactivate and activate the checkbox. So that's all there is to it with this accordion method. You don't need any variables, you don't need any collections, and it's fairly easy for you to make. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting Power Apps, please subscribe.